Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again. I'm now going to talk about Batwoman and the recent news that the previous lead character of the show, Kate Kane, has been recast by actress Wallace Day for the remaining part of season two. Now for anybody who doesn't know, in season one, the previous character in the lead was played by Ruby Rose and she departed the show at the end of season one, allegedly because she wasn't very happy with the work schedule. So the CW took the decision instead of recasting her in the role they cast a new lead actress Javicia Leslie to play a new lead character Wine Wilder going ahead for season two now I've waited a while to report on this because I just wanted to check a few articles as I normally do before running with my own views and opinions on this news and to be honest when I first heard about it I thought it was absolutely ridiculous because going back to the overall history of where this originated from when it was announced that Ruby Rose was leaving the show, a lot of people felt that the best option was to simply recast the role of Kate Kane. And this was because, despite the fact that Ruby Rose, it was a very controversial casting at the time, and a lot of people, of course, were already criticising the show because of the fact that the marketing all of all the trailers, and there was this other narrative around that Ruby Rose wasn't considered gay enough or lesbian enough by the community. So we had all of that controversial debate going on. But the fact is, it was only the first season. So really, Ruby Rose hadn't yet fully established herself in the role as Kate Kane. So in other words, it wasn't too late to recast an actor going ahead for the second season and we've seen this before in previous shows i think the biggest example was spartacus when unfortunately the lead actor andy whitfield passed away and then for the second season they cast liam mcintyre in the role so a lot of people were very confused why didn't they just carry on with kate kennis the character and therefore you could retain the same continuity with the show with all the characters because if you watch Batwoman all of the supporting characters whether it's Mary or Luke or Julia or Sophia or Alice or Jacob they all have a connection to Kate in some regard right so my query on this is that if you get rid of Kate Kane you are essentially nullifying the connections of all the previous cast members that's why I thought it was most sensible to just recast her and then the show could just carry on with its current continuity but they went ahead with Javicia Leslie as Ryan Wilder for season two and in the opening episode they essentially confirmed that Kate had disappeared or seemingly died in a plane crash and what I found almost strange about this second season so far is that for all the thing, um, for all the directive of announcing Ryan Wilder as his new lead character, nearly every single episode has been about finding Kate Kane, searching for Kate Kane in some capacity. So it kind of has really nullified the presence of Ryan Wilder by having every single episode primarily concerned with searching for Kate Kane. You know, you'd you would have thought ideally they'd want to give Ryan Wilder every chance to stand on her own and make her own impact as Batwoman but we keep re referring back to Kate Kane again and I think overall when watching this second season so far again there will be much like spoilers so you may want to turn off if you don't want to know what happens but yeah I have to say I haven't been as impressed it's very uninspired I'll say and this whole thing about the Sophia and Alice as well who seemingly has very much of a presence if not if more presence than Ryan Wilder out of the show we seem to be prioritizing more with what Alice is doing rather than what Ryan Wilder is doing and again the lack of the strong villains and all of the various kind of plot dynamics that's going on nothing has been really convincing but if you watch the most recent episode I think it was the eighth episode of this season confirmed as survived much worse we had the climatic scene at the end where we finally discovered the Kate Kane is still alive. I think she's in underground in some other Gotham barber shop. Um, it was revealed at the end. So we see her and we see her face has kind of been mutilated or damaged. She's wearing some sort of mask and we know it's her because she's wearing some sort of necklace. And yeah, a lot of people have rightly asked, what was going on here? Why did they decide to do this? You know, you made this whole fuss about announcing Ryan Wilder in the lead role. She's the first black lesbian in the lead role. You've gone and hedged your bets on her and yeah I think 
Jafri Celeste has performed well in the role, even though I think Ryan Wilder has become far less likeable in the last couple of episodes. I think Jafisha has a far more charismatic presence than what Ruby did in the lead role. But still, what was the point? Like, literally, what was the point? If you are saying that Kate Kane has disappeared or we assume she's dead and Ruby Rose wasn't coming back at the time, then if you weren't going to recast her, then why are you bringing her back now? Now, yes, we have had recent articles where Ruby Rose has suggested that maybe she wouldn't be adverse to coming back into the show. I don't believe that is the case, but what was the point? I just don't understand. And and the thing what's confusing is that they knew this was part of the plan, right? Because you don't just come up with this last minute. You still have to plan the episodes, write all the scripts and film them, which takes months in advance, right? So this must have been in their plans to do this. They must have known months when preparing for season two that they were going to bring back Kate Kane in some capacity. So why not just recast her? I just don't understand. I don't understand this decision. It doesn't make any sense. It's just just seems very disorganized i just and where can they go with it because obviously i think what will happen is kate kane will come back and she'll undergo some sort of facial reconstruction after being discovered by alice or maybe ryan will discover someone will find her and then she'll reunite with luke and mary and then it will bring up the critical dilemma like what will happen when kate kane comes back to full physical form Will she want to assume the role as Batwoman? You'd assume why. Why not? I mean, she knows all the training. She's still got a strong connection with Luke as well. And I think it was strange because actually Ryan Wilder asked this question in this recent episode. What happens if Kate comes back? Because again, if you didn't know, Ryan Wilder has been suffering from this kryptonite wound. And there has been some plot about trying to obtain these secret roses that they've got the cure and then at the end after when alice burnt all the roses on the islands they found that there was a secret rose on the desk at wayne enterprises the whole time i mean it's just i mean there have been multiple problems throughout the season i'll outline them more when i do an overall season view of the show but yeah what happens when kate comes back what are they going to do like where can you take the show going forward it literally will render ryan wilder's existence on the show useless right because they played the whole revenge angle about alice killing her mother and again something i didn't understand as well because she had the opportunity to kill alice i think in the previous episode but decided not to so what really is the point of ryan wilder if we're saying that the main motivation was to find her mother's killer and she doesn't act on it but then we're keeping alice around as well i mean uh, to be honest we could go on 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 with so many of the storytelling issues but just back to the main issue at hand i mean i've got no real background information on wallace day i think she took part in the krypton se series a while back which was basically a superman prequel i didn't watch it so i don't know how much she performed on i'm not sure of her other acting credentials either but it's just such a strange i don't get it i really don't get it like i said i had to read a couple of articles and watch a couple of videos to confirm that it was actually true because i just didn't think it made much logic you know you've announced a new batwoman essentially replacing the old one and then halfway through the season you're bringing back the old one just doesn't make sense or i'm really confused i don't know what's going to happen i just can't see any logical narrative that you can write from this decision and whether wallace day is good in the role bad in the role i think that's not the debate you know i think i've looked at her she's got a similar kind of look and size to ruby rose i'm sure she'll be fine in whatever they write for the character but it's just again i think it just shows again in terms of bat women i just see they don't really know where they're going with it like i said the lack of real main villains the various issues of the plot and storylines that they're showing currently they don't really know what direction to take it in i mean they've already announced it for season three so i would assume that if kate kane does come back in some capacity i think we will literally wrap up her story arc at the end of season two so maybe she will leave with alice or she will leave with sophia at the end or sophie rather and maybe then it will be a way to clear the decks for then when javicia leslie's ryan wilder can be the de the main dominant lead for season three maybe that's the direction they will take it but 
yeah, just completely confused. I just, I can't see how logically this will be handled. But we will wait and see what happens in the future. But those are just my quick thoughts. Again, I was a bit late on this because I just want to confirm it was actually happening before reporting on it. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you think they will handle this? What will be the point of bringing Kate Kane back? Where is the logical fallacy in deleting her from the show and then bringing her back anyway? Do you think it's a bit insulting to Javicia Leslie, the fact that they're bringing Kate Kane in? So, I mean, again, they must have known in advance. That's what really is confusing me because they couldn't have done this spare of the moment. They must have known at some point throughout season two they were going to bring back Kate Kane. So why not just recast her and then you could have just carried on and could have kept things consistent within season two instead of what they've had to do is make Alice far more dominant this season when I think many of the times he actually overshadows um, Ryan Wilder in the lead role as well so completely confusing but those are my overall thoughts let me know what you think in the comments below what do you think about Batwoman overall so far for season two I will provide a season review as I mentioned before and if there is an episode standout as unlikely as it is if there is a standout episode then I will review that as well in the long run as well but we we'll won't see what happens but yep just Give me your thoughts and feelings on this recasting of the role. If there are any further updates throughout the show, which I am still watching, even though my interest is waning a lot this season, I am still keeping up with the show. But if we see any further developments, then I'll, of course, report on them as soon as I can. But let me know what you think in the comments below. But that's it for now on a very strange casting decision for Batwoman Season 2. That's it for now. Take care of yourselves. Stay at safe distances. And I will see you very, very soon.